This thing's getting a wiper motor, but um, uh, the point of this video is, have you ever taken off metal bolts and just thrown them into your uh, magnetic tray? That's a good one, good balancing act. Secondary air injection, incorrect flow on bank one and bank two. Uh, so you always want to look for something that they both have in common. Uh, the secondary air pump, obviously, if that doesn't come on, uh, it's going to set uh, secondary air fault codes for bank one and bank two. Vacuum solenoid here. And then there's a T that splits off vacuum. So there's one line that goes this way and one line that goes over here to the other combi valve. If this valve doesn't open, uh, then vacuum doesn't get to those valves and both valves don't open. Um, the reason this was off, I just that's where I was checking for a vacuum. So basically what I did was I used a scan tool, I hooked up my vacuum gauge to this nipple right here, uh, and then I activated the valve and it was clicking, but the needle wasn't moving. A very common issue with age, this stock hose, it runs underneath the valve here and it kinks, you can see the kink. And uh, once I replace the uh, vacuum hose, there's no more kink here. Uh, now I get vacuum coming out of here when this guy pulses. So a scan tool isn't needed, uh, but it makes it easier because this is only activated when you first started cold. Uh, and then a few minutes after the engine has warmed up, it'll activate it again to, to check the second air. So for, for, for you to hook up a vacuum gauge here, you could attach it and then run it up to the window, duct tape it to the window, and then while driving, monitor the uh, gauge. But uh, you know, an investment of a scan tool uh, pays for itself and you don't have to wait for anything. You can just select output tests and activate it whenever you want. Here's a good example of the um, intercooler, the lines or how the plastic digs in. None, none of them are broken yet, but you can see how, how they've been digging in. Right here. Definitely worth keeping an eye on. Oil pressure switches have uh, pressure ratings that are stamped on the base of the sensor. This one is 1.2 to 1.6 bar. Uh, it's a single wire sensor. It's not okay to use any sensor that looks the same. This one is a single wire. It's perfectly same size, thread pitch, everything's the same, except for the pressure rating is different. Um, I think this one was 0 0.55 bar uh, and up. This one is, like I said, 1.2 to 1.6. Uh, 0.55 to 0.85, somewhere around there. Sorry, my eyes aren't focusing. But anyways, uh, so it's always important to use the same, and that's why they're color-coded. Uh, you want to use the same color, but also make sure that the actual pressure rating is the same, that it's stamped on there. If it's not stamped, it may very well be the wrong one. You don't know. Always use the correct part. 2010 Tiguan with a lean code at idle. It runs fairly smooth right now. This is uh, 62 degrees. I just started it uh, after the scan. I'll, I'll post the codes uh, in the video. But anyways, uh, usual check is to see if you can remove the gas cap, which I can. Obviously it affects running once the uh, gas cap comes off. But another common place to check is this PCB assembly right here. There's a little breather tube. All it is is an atmospheric vent. There's a rubber diaphragm in here that goes up and down which controls PCB fume circulation into the intake manifold. Uh, it's spring loaded and it's a big diaphragm. And because it goes up and down constantly at various speeds, over time that rubber diaphragm breaks and this vent here which basically just allows atmospheric air to push onto the diaphragm uh, if, if you feel any type of suction here 
that means that vent is no good. So this one here is getting a vent. Uh, you can buy just this here the, from Dorman, or you can get the whole thing. Um, replacing this whole assembly here would be the best way to go. Uh, but you know, sometimes our customers don't want to go the, the the more expensive route. I don't know if you can hear that. It's whistling a little bit. Uh, when you want to work on the central locking motor on the Eurovans, uh, it's for the sliding door, it's easier if you take the whole door out uh, and then you can work on it on the table. Uh, it's fairly easy, all you got to do is remove three mounting bolts for the bottom of the, sli the slider rail. Uh, the top just hooks in and then over on the other side you just uh, remove the um, the stop in the rail and then you can slide the whole assembly out on the rail. I'll show you in a second. There's a little plastic cover here, Phillips screw, take that off and then you can slide the rail out or the support for the rear of the door, you can slide it out here and then the whole door comes out. Uh, and like I said, all you need to do is disconnect the three bolts here at the front and then you can remove the whole sliding door. So my intake air temperature sensor is showing the wrong temperature. It's showing 60 some odd degrees uh, Celsius all the time. So I got it um, back probed right now. We're checking the resistance of the sensor. Oops. Should be wearing my glasses. This is not gonna work too well. So that's showing 600 ohms. I'm on the 1000 scale. Uh, luckily I have a second sensor. This one here is showing 4000 ohms. So I got it touched here. It's four and a half thousand ohms. Um, so that one's reading correctly. Uh, when it's cold there's high resistance. When warm it's less resistance. So um, while driving, it was constantly showing 65 degrees. Uh, so I've been driving with it disconnected, which shows, which which then registers as 21 degrees Celsius. So um, I could leave it like that, but it's good to monitor intake air temperature. That way, you know when things are getting too hot. I guess there's a small chance that the temp sensor is too close to the water injection. Uh, as the water sprays. It'll spray in a cone fashion, uh, but because of the air rushing by, my guess is that um, the sensor will never really see water. Um, and the, the old one, this is the new one already in place. That's the one that was in, in the car and it doesn't look like it's overly clean or compromised due to water intrusion. So we'll see how long this one, the second one will last. Mega squared for the wind. Yes, I know the loony has flat edges, but they're not that flat. It's all in the tune, baby. It's all in the tune. Oh, Thomas, I really want to bring that car to your shop. Uh, I want you to work on it. Uh, well, you know, as nice as that may sound, um, you guys don't know what goes on behind the, sh behind the scenes, etc. And uh, sometimes I do stuff that you may not feel is adequate uh, or good enough for your vehicle uh, you know customer opinion does matter uh, but sometimes people are just way too picky uh, for instance here this is a, a window regulator that was just put in in order to uh, uh, get this whole assembly out you have to pull this harness or at least I do pull this harness away from the regulator uh, or from the uh, panel uh, but you can see these clips they break when you take them out. So what I do is I put, uh, obviously it leaves a hole where this thing is, 
Uh, I put some duct tape over the hole and then I use these uh, zip ties. Uh, I pop those in, you can see they're nice and tight in the door. Uh, and then what I do is I wrap this around and I pull it slightly snug, you know. Uh, and it's in pretty much the same place as it was. Now to me, that seems like a good enough repair. Uh, and by good enough, I mean it does the job. It's, it holds the wiring harness secure. Uh, other people, uh, depending on if they ever do a do-it-yourself repair and they take off the panel, panel and they see this, they're going to say, well, what kind of job is this? Um, but in order to replace these, you know, they're, they're wrapped in the wiring loom here, in the harness. You can probably force them out, but uh, forcing a new one in is not going to be as easy as taking the old one out. So anyways, um, what you see on YouTube is edited uh, in terms of time constraints, you know, uh, down to a half an hour video at the longest maybe, or maybe a little bit longer, because I know people don't have the patience to watch the whole thing. Uh, certain things I don't include in the videos simply because, case in point, you know, um, there's too many guys out there that know how to do the job better than me. And, uh, you know, I've, I'm happy that they, they can do it themselves then. But uh, anyways. I watched Leon's rant, rant yesterday, so I'm sort of in the rant mind. I actually deleted all my um, tech bulletins and all my links on my website because I don't want to get flagged with copyright infringement. Anyways, have a good weekend. I forgot to mention the most important thing. The guys that uh, complain about job inadequacy, you know, not doing it correctly. Those are the same guys that complain about uh, it costing too much. Oh my god, it costs so much money. I'm going to scrap the car. It's called maintenance. You repair it when, when things go broke, and then uh, you maintain the vehicle. You look after the vehicle. It's called ownership. In the effort to conform to YouTube uh, viewing habits uh, for the majority, and this is just a quick rundown on how to remove the uh, window regulator on a Tiguan. Uh, T20 Torx, you loosen that one, you remove that one, you push it in, pull the uh, lock cylinder out, disconnect the handle, disconnect the T20 over here. I didn't pay attention to some of these uh, bolt sizes, sorry, so that for the to get the panel off. There's a couple of, I think, T30s at the bottom. Then the panel just pops off via those clips. Uh, sorry. There's a T30 in here and a T30 in here uh, for the door handle. You pop this trim off. Once the door panel is off, you can obviously dis disconnect all the electrical here. Then there's a bunch of T30s that go all the way around the panel. But before you remove the panel, you have to take out these plugs and there's little inverse torques right in here. You have to loosen that one and that one. And then you can raise the window up and secure the window in place. Uh, and then that should give you uh, the ability to remove the whole assembly uh, as you see. And that's the quick, quick version. It's too bad I didn't record this. It would have been fun to watch. So when swapping parts, I mean uh, replacing bad components, this is the lock assembly. You can see the rusty build up here. Uh, the release inside the door wasn't working. So this is the pull cable for inside the door. When pulling on it, uh, you really had to force it and then also push against the door to, for the lock mechanism to open up. Uh, so that's a mechanical issue with this thing, and that's why I'm replacing it. Uh, on the Tiguan here, it comes up, comes out with this outer door handle uh, mounting bracket. So you take the whole thing out uh, with the window regulator. One second. So as with any other door lock modules, or sorry, not door lock modules, uh, door actuators, these guys here. Uh, you remove the whole window regulator assembly, tie the window up, then this whole thing comes out with this thing attached. Uh, the reason this is in right now, because I 
had to wait for parts, wait for this thing to arrive. So now I can take this panel out and then reconnect this to here and then feed the whole thing in so that it fits in here. And then once it's in, obviously put in the little mounting screw for this outside door handle piece, put the door handle in from the outside. It's as easy as that, and no need for me to show you. Installation is in reverse of removal. Sorry about these short video clips lately. I've got some awesome uh, YouTube followers, Instagram followers. They have great sense of humor. Cold air intake, also known as water sucker. Dust thirsty little guy. So I was I always thought that uh, Rostec slash Vagcom was the only one to to uh, use the description of this code, uh, but it looks like it's a standard uh, phrased code definition. Uh, maximum maximum engine speed uh, exceeded. Engine warranty void. P fifteen sixty. Sorry, I'm not wearing my glasses, so gotta still like this. So yeah, first time I saw that was in uh, Rostec Vagcom, and I thought it was their way of being funny. Uh, they did add a smiley face, I think. So this being Snap-on product, I guess it must be a uh, legitimate code or a legitimately phrased code. Anyways, anybody else ever seen this? Engine runs, but uh, yeah, definitely the guy abused it. Uh, this was a clutch job that we had to do. Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer bus. Clutch job time. Making good progress. Exhaust, drive shaft. Here's my uh, three inch exhaust that can stay in place. Just about to, ready to pull the uh, pressure plate, etc. Release bearing, obviously looking a little bit aged. Getting a new one. I'm also replacing the fork and the spring. The input shaft seal. Ouch. And that's why you want to own a 29 year old vehicle. Keep it simple, you know. It's amazing what some of these newer cars uh, require in order for just a clutch change. Anyways, updates to follow. Christmas present for mommy. I say there is a difference. What say you? I might keep these old ones and polish them up and try to see what I can do with them. But uh, me and my lazy nature, this is the quickest thing to do for her. Sorted. <laughs> 